Hello? You say you need some shoes. Go hit a four. For the toe. Is the number four the toe? Come on, tap in. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I just had to change a couple settings. Right. How you been, man? Good, man. Just bored. Uh -huh. bored. What have you been doing during quarantine? Um, just working out. Um, I still have a lot of work I'm doing right now. It's just I'm used to being in the gym, you know, filming. So, so just give yourself like a quick introduction for the people who don't know you. Uh, my name is Michael Timmons. Um, you know, a lot of people that do know me know me as IFM Hoopers. I do a lot of high school videography around Texas. Um, notably, I've filmed for uh, Slam, Ball is Life, Max Preps. Um, I have my own brand, uh, Texas Hoops Television, right. where I do, you know, a lot of, um, you know, highlight tapes. And, you know, I don't call myself a, you know, a mixtape guy, but, you know, I've created a platform for exposure. You know, um, I'm getting a little bit older now, so, you know, I'm trying to find ways to really, you know, benefit the player and, you know, try to help them, you know, not necessarily say I'm going to get you a scholarship, but at least put their film in, the, in front of the right eyes, college coaches, things like that. So basically, like, just get them out there instead of just, like, the flashy stuff that most people are, like, so used to with the mixtape. Right, and you know, I think there's a need for that. You know, a lot of these, you know, up-and-coming guys, you know, that's their passion. That's just never been my passion. You know, I'm more of a branding guy that knows how to, you know, hold a camera and stuff like that. So um, as I've gotten older, I just continue to try to find the business side of things, you know, what's the most value for, you know, the uh, student-athlete. Now, now with some hoopers, because some hoopers, there it's changing now because more, more of them like, like before it was like basketball. It's, even in some cases, it's, this still might be the case, but in, like before, most cases it was like basketball was like the only way for them to like continue or progress or to like make ways for their future. But now it's like uh, they're coming from better backgrounds. Some of their like parents are even from like NBA players. So now like it's kind of transitioned to like where they like they want the attention like more people like like the the top prospects now are getting like more attention than ever so do you feel like that like that's a bad thing in like today's game i don't think so i think you know the way you know social media has come you know a lot of these older cats that didn't have social media um you know when i played we had facebook and myspace so i didn't have instagram to where i could post pictures of myself hooping or the videos and stuff like that. So I could definitely see a pro and a con, but I mean, you're building a brand at the end of the day. If you don't take it seriously, like you're building a brand, then it's really not benefiting you. You know, a lot of these young hoopers, I try to like talk to them and let them know that, you know, those followers are your brand and not just a number. Cause you don't know in five, 10 years where you're going to be. And, you know, you got to continue to network yourself. So I definitely think, you know, like the RJ Hamptons of the world and stuff like that, you know, where they're, they're at at that level, you know, their followers are, we're talking about dollar signs to where, you know, your average, you know, 17, 18 year old Hooper that may go play in college, you know, you're just looking for networking and things like that down the road. Now, how, how did you get started? Like with like, cause you say you filmed with uh, Slam and Boss Life. So how, how did you like get started with that? Uh, well, I played at uh, UT Dallas division three basketball, you know, so um I was able to take a lot of different classes to where, you know, I did videography, journalism, things like that. So my uh, major emerging media and communications, you know, allowed me to do a lot of different things. So um, I had the skills necessary, but like I said, I'm really like into like the brand side of things, you know, a lot of my clients now, even non-basketball wise, I try to find, you know, what their need is and things like that. So coming out of college, you know, I reached out to the great American shootout guys and just was like, Hey, you know, for those that don't know what the Great American Shootout is, it's probably one of the biggest tournaments in Texas. Um, yeah, the Gasso. So um, what I was able to do is I came to them and said, hey, you have such a big platform. Let's, you know, create a video compliment for it. So that's how I was able to uh, create Texas Soups Television. And I created that based off the fact that I took a couple of videography classes and I kind of like self-taught myself. So from there, you know, we started growing that platform. And as these, you know, slam... Brad was around Ball His Life was around back before I even picked up a camera. Um, right. So uh, he had been doing it. So, you know, once I started Texas Tube Television, I was able to, um, you know, create a brand. And that's when Slam had reached out to me and was like, hey, when you're not doing Texas Tube stuff, would you like to shoot for us? Because um, they had just started their Slam High School chapter where they wanted to start, you know, getting into the Slam uh, 
the high school basketball side of things. So, so I was like, with them for so when you do with Slam, it's like, do you like, when you go to go film them? It's like, all right, you give them the content, but at the same time, you're using that same content for yours. Like Texas Hoops I can, TV? No, so I can't do that. So for them, I would just, you know, for Texas Hoops TV, you know, I was trying to film everybody and I still do, you right. know. Uh, for Slam, their business model was, you know, they just want, you know, the most popular kids really, because that's how, you know, they grow their brand and stuff like that. So they would fly me out to like EYBL and things like that. So I'll shoot exclusively for them. So no, I couldn't use my own content um, for them, but you know, they were very flexible to where they knew if like there was somebody in Texas that I needed to cover for myself, they would let me do it and we'd be flexible that way. But really their, you know, scheme was, you know, five-star players, which was cool, you know, getting paid to, you know, film those type of guys for sure. Uh, so was, was the transition hard from like actually playing basketball to just filming it? Um, Cause I not know really. like, some people have that like super love for the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, I broke my foot my junior year. So my senior year, I really didn't get to play that much. It was kind of just like a, you know, it was a frustrating situation. So, um, but I had always known, like, I was blessed enough to understand kind of the passion and the vision I wanted to go into. Um, you know, my first job wasn't just basketball. It was a marketing firm that I did a lot of online marketing for. And I still do a lot of stuff like that today because um, it's really hard to make money full time in basketball. Um, but the transition was, it was, I liked it because, you know, it started out as a compliment to my other business and stuff like that, my other job. So on the weekends, I could go be in the gym and film basketball. Um, so it was, I mean, it was fun for me and it was fresh and new. It was good to be around the game. You know, I was making some money. Uh, all right, so some, some ugly car with a lot of motor. <laughs> uh, so no, it was cool. You know, I had, I was young. I mean, I'm still not old, but you know, I was young making money, filming basketball, you know, covering at the time, you know, some of the top kids in Texas. So um, no, it was cool. Um, I didn't get overly, I've never been in a situation where, you know, I, I really miss it, but you know, there are games and like atmospheres, packed gyms and stuff that really, you know, but I've seen a lot of basketball now. So if I can get a game where like, it gives me goosebumps and chills, then I know I'm really excited for the game because it doesn't happen too often now. So do you do you prefer uh, filming the underrated players or the players that already have like their name solidified? In, like, um, the you, know, when I, you know, when I did slam and, you know, I did some stuff for Ball is Life, um, you know, it's cool. I mean, it's great to be around that atmosphere and big games like that, but I like the balance. Um, you know, I feel like now I'm 29, you know, I've been doing this for six years now. I feel like it's my responsibility to, you know, have a platform to give back, you know, right. you know, I could go follow the five-star guys around, but, you know, I've built a brand with Texas Hoops Television that I'll be doing a disservice if I didn't continue to, um, you know, channel that avenue. I mean, there's a lot of kids that can hoop and, you know, the platform that I've created allows you, you know, um, somewhat of an exposure. Cause you know, I have every level of college coach that follows, you know, our social media pages and stuff like that. So, like I said before, I'm not promising you anything, but you know, I'm able, I've created a platform to where I could put, you know, the Tyrese Maxis and the RJ Hamptons next to, you know, and the next video could be a kid that could possibly play division two or division three to where a lot of these, you know, top tier, you know, video platforms are only like for like the top guys. So, no. you know, my pick, go ahead. No, I was, I was going to, um, no, just, just I, I, I want to know what you're gonna say. You want to know what I was gonna say? Yeah. Oh, so like my pitch has always been, you know, for especially parents that hire me, you know, your kid may be- you Get hired to film? Yes. So, you know, I'll do my own thing, but then, you know, you're, you're paying me for the platform and then, you know, for the film time. So parents do hire me, especially at Great American Shootouts to where, you know, I can't promise that your kid's going to do good, but you're paying me for like the time to be there and the platform. It's the platform really, you know, I can't promise you anything, but I mean, I can tell you that our platform, like I said, is followed by, what do we have over 5,000 followers on Twitter, which, you know, the demographics, a lot of college coaches and th like the right eyes. So you're, you're getting an exposure, an exposure service and, you know, a quality product as well. And the thing is, uh, cause we're in Texas and I feel like, um, because I got, I would say I got late into like the whole like 
hooping, like, dynamic, like, real, like, because it was, like, my junior year of high school, so I was kind of, like, at first, I was just like, oh, yeah, I know them, but then, like, junior year, because that's, like, when I first started selling shoes, and um, one of my best friends was Isaiah uh, Barrington's right. brother, so he would just be, like, because, like, I would always be around them, so it's, like, they're always talking about their games, and then he's telling me about this player, and the thing with him is, like, and when you play basketball, you, you basically know everybody. So this man was like childhood friends with RJ, Tyrese, and all them. So it's like he's always telling me. So that's when I like knew about like more of the people in the basketball scene. And so like with Texas, I feel like because um, I'm from Chicago, so I I know the two like the differences because those are like two big cities for basketball. But Texas is like you have like a bunch of under players. It's like it's like you they won't even be on the like top list but they're still like whoever they're going against they're going to give it they're all they're giving them buckets they're defending them at the highest no for sure and I think you know what I've loved about Texas over the last couple of years is that you know there's more than just you know the gasos I feel like the cream of the crop you know um, but like there's a lot of other tournaments that are allowing you know those underrated kids that may not be on the radar to get their chance to get go play against the the top kids you know, um, there's so many different opportunities. And you, and as a Hooper, you know you just want that opportunity. And these top-rated kids know that there's a lot of, like, their toughest competition has been kids that they don't know about and different players because, you know, they want that opportunity. They want to prove that they can play at this level as well. So I think that's where Texas has continued to grow. It's just so many different tournament opportunities and different just exposure opportunities for these kids to really try to make a name for themselves. Do you think Texas is the best city for basketball? Um, I mean, of course, yeah. <laughs> I think just sports. And I think just – I think the thing where – no, but I do think that we're a football state first. Yeah. But, I mean, sure. I mean, pound for pound, let, let, let's look at just recently. Um, that 2020 class before Cade went to uh, Montverde, right. you had Cade, you had Cade, RJ, and Greg Brown, top ten in the country. And now look at what this mock draft is about to show us. Mock draft right now, how many first rounders do we have from Texas? Tyrese, RJ, K, Jemias. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. You know, I mean, I think right now, like, we have the most momentum that we've had in a long time. You know, our, our up and coming class of the 2021s and 2022s, that 2022 class in Texas is going to be possibly one of the best ever. And I'm a young gun. I don't know, like, all the history of it, but just from just DFW alone, that 2022 class, and then you have dudes out of Houston too it's, it's going to be special so I think we're in a really good place and a great argument as, as far as basketball across the country do you think it'll eventually turn out to like how people they like fly out to Cali to play for those teams do you think it'll eventually turn out like for Texas people start flying out to us I don't know I don't know what the uh I don't know how other states and cities look at us I think a lot of people that look at Texas think football first and foremost um so I mean because of that I think there's we're never going to get that respect. But I mean, I hope that, you know, honestly, for the sake of basketball, I hope that if, you, if you're from a state, you play in that state. It's just always better that way. So you, you don't like the idea of like them like going to team up and like switch states or whatever? I mean, not really. I mean, I like good basketball. Um, I mean, I see it's, it's, it's pros and cons for everything. And at the end of the day, it's the family and the player's decision. But of course, we would want all our, our, our kids to stay in Texas and play together. So, so like for a player like um, like Greg Brown, for instance, he doesn't have like necessarily the most help on his team. So would you would you like would you be like a pro of it of someone coming to him or him flying out to another team? Just depends what you're looking to do. I mean, Greg Brown was going to get recruited regardless, you know. Right. So it just depends. It just depends what you want out of you know that situation. But then try to uh, win. when you're like a high top player like that, it's like people start to like criticize like everything you do. Like, oh, you didn't get a ring. Oh, you didn't score this many points. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, right. it comes from that, like and they just use all of that against you. So like, yeah. would, you, I mean, would you be like, okay with it? Like if he went to you go know, like to LA or somebody come to him so they could team up and win a state championship just for like his like resume. Cause he is like, he's already like solidified his spot. Like yeah, I mean, it just, it just depends, I think, what's important to you. You know, a lot of these dudes like Greg, you know, 
their realistic end goal is the NBA. So, I mean, if, you know, if you put me in that position, you know, thinking I, I would have wanted to stay in my community, play with my friends that I grew up with and, you know, did it organically. And, you know, if I was Greg Brown, like Greg Brown was one game away from going to one or two games away from going to the state, the state tournament this year, right. you know, so, you know, coming out of that region, they had a, a good shot anyways. So, you know, Greg's going to, you know, be very successful, I think. So, um, but I mean, I can see it both ways. I'm not criticizing it, what people do. It just depends what you want. You know, you're turning into situations now, like, do you want to be a kid and go to college? Or do you want to chase the bag now? Neither is wrong. It's just some, I think some kids, you know, with the football. Like the G League and everything, because he did, he did just get offered to the G League. Right. Shoot, I mean. Same situation. Yeah, it just depends what you want. What, what's the most important thing to you? And obviously, it's the business side of things. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, me, I mean, I don't know. There's no right or wrong thing, I think. It just depends, like, you know, if you fall in love with college and you've always wanted to, like, experience college, and a lot of kids are going to go that route. But, I mean, if there's money involved and, you know, it's a great business opportunity, you know, if that's your – if like, R.J. Hampton was like, you know, my goal was never to be a, the best college basketball player, was to be the best NBA basketball player, so – his route was pro right away to get him ready for that next level. So it just depends what your dreams of. You know, some kids wake up when they're six years old and say, oh, I want to play for Duke, Kentucky. And that's just always been like something special for them. Right. So there's, I think there's going to kind of be kids to do that. But I mean. And even, even players like with that like dream, like, oh, my dream school is Duke. Uh, like also at the same time, because you got, you got big time players that these like, even the high school players now, like, they're being looked up to. So, like, Jalen Green, Isaiah Todd, like, you see them, they're going straight to, the, like, the G League now. And then on top of that, you got all of that money. Like, 500 k to an 18-year-old is insane. So, like, do you right. think that's just going to, like, do you think that's just going to, like, oh, well, like, because you know what I mean? That's, like, a big, that's a big, like, incentive. Like, oh, yeah, let me get 500 k. I I don't even care about college anymore because, because in their mind, they're going to think, like, they don't think, oh, well, maybe an injury can happen. Or maybe, like, you know what I'm saying, I don't, I need a backup plan or anything. It's like, because in their mind, they're like, oh, well, I'm like a five-star now, so I'm going to the league regardless. And it's like, I might as well get money. So do you think, like, like, because I feel like that's going to, how it's going to transition. It's like more and more people are going to take that, um, that pro route instantly because right now, like in the mind of a kid, like it's no real incentive of going to college. You know what I mean? Like a person like like Zion, he was like the most rave person ever, and he couldn't like put a dollar to his name. And so many people wanted to like, you know, like he wanted to have like merch and like all of his shoes. Like he was he was just so like productive, but he couldn't because he was in his NCAA. Right, and I think it's just going to be specific to you know background, family situation, things like that. Um, you know, there's going to be still kids that want to go to college and, you know, um, we'll just have to see. I think, you know, with how RJ and LaMelo started it, we're going to kind of get to see what this crop looks like and how successful they are. You know, they're going to be just the study. Right um, now, they're, they're doing good. LaMelo doing RJ. He's, he's yeah, they made money, good. you know, um, they stayed healthy for the most part. And, you know, they're projected to be first rounders, if not lottery picks, both of them. So, you know, I definitely think that it's going to make the NCAA have to, you know, think about some things for sure. What, because, I mean, what do you think they would like differ in like their, like their setup now to like make people want to come back? It's the money thing, I guess. I mean, that's just what it is really. Um, I mean, I see, I just, I always try to look at things both ways. I love college basketball. I think we all do. We, everybody, I mean, Marsh Madness, it's, I mean, it's, it's a staple in our, in our, in our, in our country, you know, so there's always going to be that, but I mean, the product, like you said, like how many more people do you think watch the NCAA tournament this year because of Zion? The NCAA profits off of big name players, so they just have to do the math and say, hey, how much money are we going to lose because we continuously lose the top players to, you know, the pro route? And we'll just see, like a personality like LaMelo and RJ, if they were in college, like, you know, they need those type of star powers each year, I think. So, I mean, they're gonna have to think about it because I do think that pros are gonna, I mean, high school kids are gonna continue to forego college for the pro route.
Yeah, I definitely feel like, and like the thing is, is like they're gonna have people come in every year, so it's like they they should play. I I do agree. They should play smart about it. Like, okay, well, say we bring in this X amount of money because of Zion. All right, well, let's just cut them this much. You know what I mean? So then yeah. it's like, so now all the people that have like all this hype. All this hype is just gonna keep on going, keep on going to college route, right? and then is, and then it's just gonna continue. And then that's when they're gonna, they're gonna have like, uh, like, a super decision to go between college or the pros because they they will be like, okay, do I want to go college, have my degree, a potential backup plan, play for March Madness, and get a chunk of money, or so I just want to go straight to the pros because that's that's what my main focus is. So that's I think that's what right. they should do. I mean, I think I think as as like everybody wants to be the big man on campus. I think that's just what we all like see, you know, outside looking in. So if you can potentially make money and do that, I mean, like I'm sure RJ. I'm not, I'm not speaking for anybody, but but like I'm sure RJ. Let's say he went to Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, wherever you know, and he was making the same amount of money as he was overseas. I'm sure he'd rather be at a college campus, you know, with his peers and things like that, you know, playing in front of He's like in, that. he's in what, New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah. Which so I'm sure is beautiful, like, but like, I mean, I'm sure our, a lot of our goals were like to be the man on campus and, you know, in like a crazy environment um, like that in college atmosphere. So I do think there's still a lot of pros to playing college ball. But I mean, at the end of the day with these kids that can almost taste the NBA, like, and they can get the money right now. Why wouldn't you? You know. Right. And you do like I know you uh, focus main on like the brand and like giving exposure to these uh, hoopers. But do you do you stay in contact? Like say you film like a big time name. Do you do you try to stay in contact as much as possible with these hoopers? Um, I mean I'm around. Uh, you know I'll I do build relationships, but I mean I know also that between. 17 and 19, you know, a lot of stuff shifting in young people's lives. So, you know, I don't try to be big bro to anybody. You know, I think I, I think, move. I think, you know, there's a respect factor that I give and that I, I receive as well. So I'm always around, you know, if there's some knowledge I can drop, you know, I will. But I, I don't, you know, I'm just, it's weird because I've just been around since 2014 and just each year it's like I reload and you know try to help who's in front of me but I've built a lot of relationships for sure so um, but not enough to where like because I mean it's just a lot of people are like I didn't grow up with these kids I didn't grow up I'm never like going to be really like in their circle you know but I'm around and you know it's a mutual respect for sure and you also created the, um, the hoop dynamics with uh, Tyler right yeah, so uh, me and Ty me and Tyler Ralph, um, two years ago, you know, he asked me to come and film for him. A lot of people just think, a lot of people just think I film. So like when I have conversations, they understand that I do marketing, you know, branding, all that stuff. So I was like, man, you're verified on Instagram. You have over 400,000 Instagram followers. Like, how are you making money off your brand? So we came up with the concept of online basketball training. So, you know, he, I'll film the workouts and like, we'll do drills about, you know, shooting, finishing ball handling and stuff like that, where you can pay monthly to have access to all these and workouts like that. So we just continue to grow that platform. And how, how is it working with him? Cause I know, I know he's like, he's top, like I'd be seeing his videos and it's like, they're, they're, especially like with the tennis ball, like I already yeah. like, yeah, it's intense. I mean, he, he's, he has this following for a reason. You know, he's one of the best I've ever seen, you know, his work ethic, you know, we're friends now, which is great, you know, um, built a great relationship. But like the one thing I respected about him is his work ethic. Like you don't just do what he does just because it's natural to you. I mean, he's obviously one of the he's one of the best in the world at what he does. Um, but I mean, when we get into the gym, you know, he works hard and, you know, he's getting a little older now. So, you know, he's dedicated to his craft, you know, he's working out, eating right, you know, because he has to carry himself almost as a professional athlete as well to be able to do the type of stuff he does on a consistent basis. So that's continued to grow, especially right now where people can't access, you know, gyms and things like that. We're doing a lot of 
stationary yeah, ball handling. IG live and everything. He's doing a lot of IG live things, a lot of stationary things to where, you know, we'll have kids from all over the country and the world, you know, a kid up north might be where they have basements be in the basement, you know, another kid may be in his driveway, you know, another kid may have space in his kitchen or living room. So we're just trying to create opportunities for kids, you know, stay sharp because this AAU situation, you know, in this quarantine, who knows when we're going to be able to come back, but when it's time to come back, everybody's going to have to be ready to go right away. So we're just trying to, you know, tell kids and athletes to stay ready, stay sharp, you know, stay in shape. So we're doing, you know, 30 minute workouts where you can build a sweat, you know, different handle things, just trying to stay relevant to the time and the situation. Do, do you uh, do you be trying to get into the drills? Well, I have a little bit recently, but I mean, he he. I think he's scared to like see that I can handle the rock a little bit, so he just tells <laughs> me to stay behind. He says stay behind the camera. So, <laughs> but no, what he does is crazy, um, and I do, and you know, the people that do hate on him, a lot of the stuff that he does is you know, for people to you know get more comfortable handling the ball you know, all of this crazy handle stuff. It's just so you can handle the ball without, without, without you know, thinking about it. You know, there's some of the combinations he does. Hold on, don't bark, don't bark. Um, some, of the, some of the stuff he does, it, it looks crazy, but you know, if you can do that without thinking about it, then you can read the whole court at the same time. So he has a rhyme or reason about everything. You know, the haters, and I, not haters, but outside looking in that don't see a benefit of what he does, you know, he really breaks down the details and, you know, he teaches his players why, why he does what he does. It's not just for flash, you know? Yeah. And like, I don't like, cause like, um, cause how I met him or like, he, I don't even found out about him again was Isaiah. Cause he, he, uh, before he went to Colorado, he, he trained with him heavy. And I was right. like, and me and Zay, we would go to like, like our local gym fitness connection and we'll just be playing pickup. Like, Time we get out of school, we just go play pickup, and he'll be doing these moves. Cause most of the time we're on the same team, but the right. few times that we have to like go on a like separate teams, like I'm guarding him, and I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> yo, like how are you doing that? That's tough. Or even when I'm watching him at Allen, I'm like, yo, that's tough. He's like, he's like, now nah, I'm with Tyler, and that's how I became like like a fan of him, and that's how I met him, and like, right. and then eventually when I like sold him shoes and like actually got to like personally meet him. I was like, I was like, yo, he's like, like real chill. Like, you know, like some, some like coaches that like, if they're at that high level, they have like that same, like, like they're all like, oh, well, you can't tell me this because I went D1 and I trained right. all these professional athletes. And it's like, he really, he's not even like that. It's like, yeah, his stuff is intense, but at the same time, it's like, it's intense for a reason and, and it's definitely going to get you to the next level. And, and like, even the people that be in the comments, they're like, oh, well, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. And trust me, I'm, like, at the most casual level at basketball at this point because it's like I've seen everybody surpass me. So I'm like, I'm, I'm going to stick to selling shoes. But, like, I be trying to do some drills too. And it's like, like you can, like, already tell, like, this is, like, doing this drill is going to help you with, like, doing this on the court. Like, it's automatic. And it's just like some people, they just, like you said, like, they just outside looking in and, don't really know the real effects and they yeah, and I mean, hype. yeah i think everybody has their own training way and way of doing things and you know i think the more trainers the better everybody you know needs a platform to get better um but the one thing that like like you said about tyler is real chill and i don't like i don't associate myself business-wise with anybody that i don't respect as a person um that's one that's one key about you know working for myself that you know business relationships first i got to respect you as a person and understand like if he was a if he was a cocky, arrogant person all the time, you know, sometimes when he's hooping, he, he, you, you can see it. Cause I mean, he was big time, but I mean, as a person, you know, he respects me, you know, he cares about me genuinely. And that's what you need to grow business. But I mean, as far as like the haters and stuff, you know, he, he respects his model. He's a professional. So like, you know, we have our YouTube channel to where like people will be in the comments all the time, you know, putting their two cents in, but I mean, that doesn't affect our business or affect his dedication to his craft. So we just keep it moving. Yeah, and that's really all you got to do because it's like I have joined one of the lives sometimes and it was like, or like he'll like repost like the people who's doing his drills and it's like, it's people from like different countries, like all over the world, bro. Live and like three in the afternoon, it's like two in the morning there and they're right. just, 
dribbling, dribbling, dribbling. I'm like, yo, like, he has, like, a, like, you can tell, like, he has, like, a genuine effect on people, and he's, like, actually getting people to the next level instead of right. just, like, oh, for, kind for of sure. finesse. And then yeah, another and thing I, with these guys, um, I also came to notice, it's, like, you guys have, like, a big thing with, like, Yeezys. Like, I feel like all the trainers, like, in that area, like, y'all y'all got something with Adidas. Is, is that is that the thing between you guys? I know Tyler has some. We do we do, do a lot of stuff with Adidas, for sure. Um, but uh, there's no contract, for sure, yet, yeah. or anything like that. So, uh, But I know Tyler's a big sneakerhead. Um, I was weirdly more when I was younger than I got out of it when I transitioned to myself just because of my spending priorities. Um, right. But I mean, I'm slowly starting to get back into it. Um, you know, the thing that sucks about the quarantine right now is that like at these Great American Shootouts that I'm the director of media for, you know, a lot of that's like my fun spending money that, you know, I would be probably giving a good amount of it to you, my guy. <laughs> uh to lace me um but no uh tyler um dj sackman up in new york um another trainer i think he's with adidas yeah um i know adidas but i mean tyler gets shoes all the time just in the mail um, right like so but i mean if 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 if, if, uh, if, if we get a shoe deal i wouldn't i'll would wear whatever if the, if the money's right yeah because like, i would like y'all gravitate because uh, Tyler, he like anytime he hits me up, it's it's only easy. Like he only asked for a Jordan yeah. shoes. He asked for a Jordan, but it was it was for his uh, son Theo. So it was like right. he asked me for Adidas. You asked me for Adidas. Uh, J Law, it's like they, yeah. y'all like y'all only want Adidas. So I, I was just I, I was just curious like if that was like like a little thing you had going on, or if, like Adidas was like the go to thing. Because I mean it is comfortable because I know y'all are on your feet all this all day. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, though, like the with the Yeezys, like it's just easier to get them from you. Right. Um, I think that's it's just the convenience. That's why, you know, I've shopped with you and I will continue to shop with you. Just the convenience, you know, with a lot of people like let's say it's Wednesday and I got I just found out I got like some fly event or something I got to pop up to on a weekend and I want to be fresh. You know, I can't order that stuff off of. Uh, Stock X and everything like that, like and get it to me by that time. So like, you're the guy, especially in the city, and you know now you're starting to make a name for yourself across the country. Yeah. Um, how is that going for you? Let's talk about you a little bit. Um, how has it grown? Like, how have you grown? Um, I feel like because um, I did start it in like high school. At first, it wasn't like like it was just like oh like it was just a thing to like you know what I'm saying like. Cause I remember in middle school, my sister, she had like brought me to, um, she was like, do you want these new Jordans? And I was like, and like, like when I was like little, little, like, I was just like, I played video games all day. Like I didn't care about anything else. I didn't look, I didn't care how I look. My mom was like, always had to tell me, Josh, iron your shirts, make sure your shoes are tied. I'm like, I don't care, mom. Like I didn't care. And then my sister, she asked me if I want some new Jordans. I'm like, sure. So we stood in line. It was for the, Carmine Sixes. I think this was 2012 or 2014, one of those years. And then I went back to like the next day at Warm. This was in middle school. And like, it was like people I didn't never think was like going to talk to me like, yo, he got those new shoes, those new shoes. I'm like, yo, I'm like, that's crazy. So that was like the first thing. And then my, I went back to my freshman year. Um, Cause my mom, like, she didn't, she wasn't like a big fan of like buying me like all these shoes and stuff. Cause again, like she was an adult, she had her like, you know, what I'm saying you buy the necessities, like, so there's right. no point Thanks. in buying expensive shoes just for you to mess them up. So it was just like I had like a little thing where it's like, all right, I'll wear these shoes for like a week, and then I'll go ahead and sell them, and then I'll just keep on switching them out. And then like, so at school, everybody's like, yo, Josh, he. He's a shoe plug. He got all these shoes. But little did they know, I have, like, two shoes in my closet. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, I was really finessing. But then that's when I found out that when I'm when I'm selling these shoes to get another pair, it's like, some of these shoes are worth way more than these other shoes. So I'm like, I'm like, yo, like, that could be a thing. And at that time, like, I was, like, in the basketball, like, mix. But, like, 
I wasn't the best, so that didn't work out. And then, like, I had to figure out, like, what I wanted to do. So then, um, so, again, being around basketball, I ended up playing with Zay on the AU team. Um, so that's how we, like, got, like, we knew of each other, but then, like, when we had, like, got super close. And then, again, just being around that basketball environment, um, you just, like, you, you know all these basketball people. So, like, when I started selling these shoes, Zay, he would always, like, we would go out and, like, there's, like, in high school, there's nothing really to do in Texas besides going to a sporting event. So we're going to these sporting events, and he's like, yo, Josh, this is Chris Harris. Yo, this is Tyrese Maxey. And at first, I'm like, oh, like, what's good, bro? Like, I, I don't even know who these people are. Like, I'm just thinking they're Zay's friends. And then, like, he tells me, he's like, he's like nah, they're, like, famous elite people. And I'm like, really? He's like, yo, like, just go look them up. Like, just type in their name. You're going to find all their videos. I'm like, yo. So, like, regularly, I used to just, like, sell on, like, StockX just for, like, the money or, like, eBay or Flight Club just to get the money. But then it was like, no, I can sell to, like, real-life people and, like, make these connections and, like, get them laced up. If they want to shoe, like, I can be that person and actually – like solidify like when people in my freshman year were calling me the shoe plug. No, I can actually be the shoe plug and giving it to all these people. And I think the biggest growing spot for me was um it was a tournament out in Louisville. I think it was called the Wave. The next wave, yeah, with uh Buffington. Yeah. Yeah. So um and that was also the same day um that pack of Kyrie's came out with like the SpongeBob. The thing. SpongeBob, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I feel like that was the biggest day because um, because I, I was standing in line and I remember um, a couple of people that asked me for them. And I was like, all right, cool. I like, just like a normal order or whatever. And then uh, my cousin, uh, I don't know if you know, he played on Island, Tyler Nolder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I, he he had uh, called me, and he was like, yo, he's like, are you getting them? And I was like, yeah, I was like, what you need? And so he's like, let me just get one. I was like, all right, for sure. And then he was like, where can you meet me up at? And I live in Louisville. He was like, well, he's like, uh, I'm going to be at this, like, tournament thing. And I'm like, what tournament? And he was like, oh, yeah, all these big people are going to be there. Tyree's going to be there, like, all the – like top recruits are gonna be there for texting and I was like, for real? And he and he was like, Yeah, he's like, just slide through. So I slid through and that day I got to sell to Tyrese, Chris, and Greg Brown all in the same day. And like when they had like reposted me, it was like my like I like my request tab went up to like 30 I was like I didn't even like know what to do I'm like yo I was like y'all gotta chill and then so that's when I like that's when I was like all right and then I just kept on with that momentum again like once you're in the basketball world one person knows everybody so I just kept on selling and then um again like selling to you Brad Tyler it just like the momentum just kept on um like going and then I feel like with me it's like I'm not too entirely about the money. Like, of course, making money, like, hundreds of more dollars on, a, like, a shoe, of course, that's nice. But at the same time, it's like, I didn't really get to, like, live that full basketball. Like, I'm, like, I'm not, uh, like, I'm not a hooper. Like, <laughs> my athletic, right. I can't even dunk, and I'm 6'4". So, like, my nice. athletic abilities aren't meant for hooping. So, it's like, yeah. for me to be around this hoop culture, still be able to talk hoops to you guys it's like that's what makes it even better because i can i can still like oh I, here here's the shoe and then like talk to you guys about like hoops you know what i mean so it just right, makes like, a whole big connection no that's dope man how do you scale how do you scale something like this how do you continue to grow um i've just been especially during this quarantine thing uh i just just been thinking of ideas like, like this was one of them just wanted to like interview the people that I sold to just to um, give us both exposure. You know, some people, you know what I'm saying, some of these supers, they're not 
Like I sold to Hoopers, of course I've sold to like Maxis and all of them, but like there's other like lower level like Hoopers and like yeah, they would want some exposure or they would want to get a like a pre taste of like the light of like doing an interview, you know what I mean? So I just thought right, this facts. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. A good idea just to give all of us exposure, uh just to get to know me and then the people that I sell to. Um right. and then just other ideas just like when every obviously when everything opens back up, go to more like basketball events. Like I, like that's not really a big problem because I I go to like I went to the hoop fest. I went I go to the tournaments when I can when I have time and just you know what I'm saying interacting with more people, um, close to my. I definitely think, yeah, I definitely think the summer for you AAU season you'll really be able to grow a lot more if you just start in the gym around. Um, you know, just use it as a fact that, you know, it's an investment of your time, you know, just going to these tournaments and just being around, you know. Because, um, I mean, you're definitely needed in the community and you're just continuing to grow business business as well, you know. You're going to continue to find the business side of this thing, you know. I think the one thing about me was, you know, I didn't chase any clout, but, you know, working for Slam for the year and a half or two years I did, you know, built my name to where now, like, iPhone Hoopers can go and, like, you know, film kids that aren't ever going to be on Slam, but like I'm still filming them, so it means something to them. Um, you're going to be able to, you know, build your clout and then you know build your business at the same time. Yeah, and then um, that's what that's another thing, cause like, not to hate on anybody's hustles, but like I see like all these like, cause obviously I'm not the only like shoe salesman or whatever. So like there are other people that sell shoes, and I feel like that's their like number one goal is like oh, let me sell to him, and he'll give me all the clout. But it's like, for me, it's like, the people that I sell to, like, I'm actually, like, fans of, and I'm like, yo, like, yeah. when I sell them shoes, I'm like, yo, like, like, I love your game, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not even, like, about that. Like, I'd rather just be friends with you than even get this X amount of followers from you reposting, you know what I mean? And that's why I feel like... Right. um I differ from some of the other people. It's just like, it's just a genuine connection. And then like, yeah. I know my market, so I'm just going to keep on like going in that field. And obviously I can like, shoes aren't limited to basketball people, of course. So even like I'm mainly in the basketball community, I could sell to a football player if I wanted to, you know what I mean? But it's just like all the people that I sell to, I'm not, I'm not chasing clout. And then it's like, even the people, like there are some people like, I'll go out in public, like, to, like, an event or something, and people will be like, yo, you're for the toe. like, and then they'll, like, be asking, like, all these questions, and I'm like, yo, they, like, think I'm famous because I sold to, like, Tyrese and all these people, and I'm like, nah, bro, like, it's not even like that, like, I'm just, like, I'm just having fun while I'm doing it, I think that's another big part, like, I have fun selling shoes. I, I wear all the shoes that I get. I'm not just trying to like, like, you know what I mean? Like I'm attached to sneaky culture as well. Like I know my right. background, my shoes. I, I wear, I wear them faithfully. Like I don't even care if I crease my shoes. Well, I mean, I do, but at a certain extent, like if they get creased, yeah. oh well, you know what I mean? Like some right. people buy their shoes, never even wear them. You know what I mean? It's like, there's no point. So yeah, especially with uh, quarantine, I feel like I've, I've been, I've been, I, I had no choice, <laughs> but to think of like, right. new yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah. No, you, gotta stay you gotta stay innovative, man. You gotta stay innovative, especially now that you feel like you belong. Like, like you've reached a spot where like, you know, you belong, you kind of know how it works. So now you just got to continue to level up in every different way possible. So, I mean, you're on to good things, man. Yeah. And, but I, I really appreciate you uh, doing this interview with me. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we hop off this thing? No, nah, man. I just I want everybody to you know be safe, you know, and stay ready, especially if you're a young hooper, you know, because as soon as they say it's a go, these tournaments, you know, these media guys, everybody's everybody's itching to get back into the gym and watch basketball, right. and everybody's itching to play. So you just got to stay ready, um, you know, stay in shape, and just hopefully this ends sooner than later. So yeah. just be safe. They, they did say we're going to be open up in like the next week or two. Hopefully. We'll see, man. Just keep your mental right, you know, keep your body right and stay ready. You know, that's the most important thing right now. All right.
All right, man. Have a good talk to you, man. All right, bro. Let's wrap soon. Talk soon. All right.